For the Stoneham Council on Aging, I'm Dennis O'Hara, and welcome to this uh, October 2019 edition of Senior Matters Podcast. Um, with me is Maureen Canova, the Director of the Council on Aging and the Stoneham Senior Center. Welcome. Thank you. And joining us today is Erin Wortman. She is the Director of Planning and Community Development for the Town of Stoneham. Uh, we'll refer to her as the Town Planner, um, just for... Um, uh, Shorten, shorten sake, um, <laughs> but welcome. Thank and you. we are here today to talk about the uh, upcoming federal census. Mm-hmm. Um, many people know that every year Stoneham does a town census, uh, just to keep our uh, our um, uh, um, book straight. But uh, every ten years, it's federally mandated mm-hmm. that uh, the country count, and this is federal law count specifically every single person that um, lives in the United States, and there are a variety of reasons for that. We'll talk about that. Um, so I want to thank you both for joining us today. Mm-hmm. And um, let's first talk about what um, the federal census is and um, you know, w- what does it mean? Um, so, so the federal census, as you said, it will be out um, beginning in April 1st of next year. Really important that people fill out this form to, so that we can have a correct count of the number of people that live in our community as Mm -hmm. as well as across the country so there's a big effect of not filling out this form so it's really really important meaning that the dollars that come into our community as well as legislative um um, Erin can probably explain that a little bit better, but I think that it's really important that we make sure that our numbers um, are correct mm-hmm. and that we have a complete count. Mm-hmm. So if Erin, do you want to kind of expand on that? Thanks. Sure. Um, so the census matters and how we kind of um, talk about why the census matters is because undercounted is underrepresented, which is underfunded. So that means that everything you do day to day is affected by that census count. Mm-hmm. So who your representation is at, in DC, mm-hmm. what those districts look like, where your representative lives is all contingent on the census. Mm-hmm. Now taking the politics side of that, when you think about your roadways, like when you drive on the highway mm-hmm. to get there, all those federal dollars, your federal dollars are um, put into your highways, your public transit, your accessibility, all those things and how you move around and how you're mobile. Mm-hmm. It affects housing, it affects mm-hmm. your child care, it affects how Stoneham receives funding. And so we really want to be super clear on this because it's only once every 10 years. It's so important that we do it correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, it is federal law also. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're a citizen of the United States, you're required to participate in the census for all the good reasons that you just uh, described. But for all of the importance of the data that's gotten, it's really a very simple process. I liken it to when you're on a field trip and they say everybody raise your hand and then they count and you put your hand down and that's pretty <laughs> that, that's it like you're not required you don't have to go in for an interview you don't mm-hmm. have to submit a whole bunch of paperwork right um, so um, what is the the process what will happen um, as far as uh, st- starting how how will you know the census has begun so beginning in March mid March um, everyone will be getting a postcard. Every household will be getting a postcard and there's going to be asking folks to fill out the census and that is by way of phone or go online so they can call it in or they can go online. If people don't accomplish one of those two, then they'll have people go out door to door Mm -hmm. to have people fill it out because they really want to get a complete count, like I said. Um, And that'll be beginning in That'll be getting, they'll get that card uh, at mid-March. Right. Very much okay. Um, I think one of the biggest concerns that from the seniors, uh, uh, older adult population as well, is like we've done at the senior center many, many um, programs on scams and so forth. We want the re- one a big reason for us to be involved in this conversation as well is that we want to make sure that people don't see this as a scam mm-hmm. and that they see that this is legitimate and very, very important and it will affect their lives. Yeah. So I think it's it's just our opportunity to be able to educate. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, if you want to expand on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, so what we can expect as residents in whatever community you live in, but for stone and purposes, you will receive a postcard uh, mid to late March. Mm-hmm. April 1st, no joke, is considered census day, and we ask everyone to complete the census on that day. Now, if you receive your card and you, you know, don't want to talk on the phone or you don't want to... Um, do it online, you actually, through the census, can request a paper copy. It's a way of keeping the carbon footprint down and also to not waste paper. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're encouraging any of those three responses. We're asking people to respond either online, on the phone, or 
on paper so people aren't coming to your house. Let's right. avoid that whole yes. aspect mm-hmm. yes. and just say, you know, let's just get it. I don't want to say get it over with. <laughs> Engage in the process. <laughs> um, do it. And you won't have to worry about it again for, you know, until 2020, um, 2030. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's a yeah. long time away. Yeah, <laughs> and um, for those who don't receive a postcard mid-March and, you know, April 1 comes and they're like, hey, I didn't receive anything. Um, the census tells us you can go online or you can call and um, when you go online you just type in your address and you can fill it out right there so you Mm -hmm. don't need that like postcard passcode right you can just type in I live at one main street and here's my information Mm -hmm. and um, so I'm hoping this uh, podcast is actually helpful for people of all ages because everyone has a lot of the same concerns when it comes to the census Um, I think one of the things that seniors may be a little more um, concerned about is that you don't have to be the person that provides the information. A caretaker is more than uh, competent to do it. So I, I know, because um, I actually uh, did home visits 10 years ago. I worked for the census. Oh, yeah. And um, going to senior time, and a lot of them are, oh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember her name. or You know, they're just afraid of getting the details wrong if mm-hmm. they might be a little absent-minded. But um, home health workers can do it, other family members. Um, someone that doesn't even live in the household can provide the information. It's just asking for information. There's no, um, you're not, uh, you know, signing a contract that's saying all no. this is valid. If you make a mistake, you know, you can correct it. It's not a big deal. Right. Um, but yeah, but that uh, I, I think a lot of seniors would be comforted by knowing that they don't have to be the one to actually provide the information, that someone can help them. And actually, um, we will have several opportunities for seniors to receive help submitting it online, correct? Absolutely, yeah, Yeah. at the senior center and other locations in town, that's Mm -hmm. gonna happen. Um, But I also want to mention really quick too, Never, they'll never ask questions about your social security number. They'll mm-hmm. never ask bank information, and they'll never ask for a fee. So it, all those three things, I think, are very important for people to know. Those questions will not be asked. They also um, don't ask criminal history or citizenship status. That's right. So that's right. The, those concerns are, um, you know, alleviated. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yes, but like you said, you, you should <laughs> follow the common sense um, of, of any t- sort of scam, you know, alert. If, if you're on the phone with someone who says they're from the census and then asks, well, what's your social security number? You, you should know immediately that that means they're not from the... Because they would not ask that question. Right. And nobody's going to call you anyway. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so, but you know, again, people may not realize the process. So that's mm-hmm. a good thing that we're, uh, we're doing here today. Um, so the information that they do want, what, what will they ask on the uh, census form or in the census interview? So they're going to ask for basic demographic information. They're going to ask where you live and how many people are in your household. I need to be clear about this, that mm-hmm. by law, your responses will not be used against you. Um, I work for the town. I will not see your responses from the census. So if you live in a two-bedroom, for instance, and there are 25 people in your mm-hmm. household, please list 25 people in your household. Um, we will, you know, we, we don't... I don't want to say we don't care, but yeah. from a census standpoint, we don't care about your legal accessory dwelling unit. We don't care if you're stacking bodies in the bedroom. Um, we really, it, it is the most important in the antithesis of the census is that every single individual counts. Mm-hmm. And something that we heard from the census that actually is very interesting and may or may not um, involve our seniors is that one of the most undercounted population are um, children mm-hmm, sure. that were not born prior to the last census. Mm-hmm. And it, it's so strange to me because when, you know, you have an infant or a toddler, like really your life revolves around them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you would think that people would count, but the census was actually very clear in saying a lot of times, like we don't think to count, I guess, smaller bodies. I, I'm not really sure what it is, <laughs> but we need to make sure we count every single, yeah. every single living mm-hmm. um, individual in every single household. Well, one, one misperception last time was that th- they thought that we only counted registered voters or, or, oh, or adults old enough to vote. Yes. Whereas okay. it's not, could be further right. from the truth. We need everybody. And think about this, um, having a small child who's going to be going into the school systems. So funding has everything to do with what money's come in from the federal government for, for schools. So we need to be able to have a correct count of the number of students um, who will eventually be in the school system, right? So young kids as Absolutely. well. So really important. And not to be a complete census nerd, but I think it's so exciting <laughs> that 2020 census is the first kind of opportunity that we do have the option of responding online. Right. Yes. I think back to like 10 years ago and how different my life was and what what a different place I was in 10 years ago when I filled out the census 
even 20 years ago when I filled out the census, like really thinking about how much things have changed. And if that alone is your reason to fill out the census, mm-hmm. that should be oh, your reason alone that, to fill it out. Because like thinking yep. about how, di- what were you doing 10 years ago, Maureen? Oh, Something God. different than yeah. right now, right? Absolutely. Like your household was different, like your day-to-day was very different. And when we think about filling out the census of what your life is like on April 1st, 2020, and that census is going to capture what your life looks like in 2020, what what an incredible kind of like forecast it would be for the next 10 years and where that money, that federal dollar should be going toward for the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Was, was one of the, you um, are a census nerd. I am. So, I'm so <laughs> geeking out at this. That That's was one great. of the most frequent feedback we got 10 years ago was, can I just go online and do this? I'm like, yeah. oh, no, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Federal government hadn't yeah. quite caught up that far. <laughs> <yet. laughs> I'm very impressed that they're here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But and, and just so that everyone d- does understand as well that because it's wonderful that we do have an opportunity to go online, not everybody's going to have access to go online, um, which is fine. You can call it in or um, we were talking about having some um, – probably the month of people being able to go to different locations to be able to have access to computers so they can go online and fill it up. Mm-hmm. So. In a very safe, mm-hmm. um, private space if they wish. Right. 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 And so to be clear, you only have to do one. You either fill out a paper form, call in, or go online. You don't have to do all Correct. three or any kind of combination. That's well, right. Once you do it, you're done. You're done. And um, so uh, let's talk about uh, working for the census because I know a lot oh. of uh, people who you know may be retired or may, you know, decide just to, you know, pick up a job for a few months and you can do that with the census. So if anyone's looking for extra money, um, we are having a uh, a day on November, it's Monday, November 18th from 10 to 12, the census uh, folks there will be at the Senior Center for Mm -hmm. anybody who's interested in a job with the census. Um, I think they said it's $25 an hour. Plus mileage. Plus mileage. And um, the work will begin in end of February, March. Um, and they would like to see people who are interested. Um, I think it's a minimum of 10 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a great opportunity for people who are looking for some extra money. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, you know, there's a lot. Unemployment rate is really low right now in Massachusetts, and, mm-hmm. and which is great. But if you're looking for extra money, this is a great opportunity for Absolutely. nights and weekends. Yes. Correct? Specifically. Yeah. They said after 4 o'clock and specifically on the weekends. Mm-hmm. And the census says that for the employment opportunities, you can really think of it as a three-month, six-month, or nine-month employment. Mm-hmm. But that's really their timeline. Right. And the mm-hmm. nine-month is really... yeah. It's really, a, like, that's really long. long. I would think it's more like three to three, six three months. Three to six months, yes. And uh, you will be paid for training. You will be paid 55 cents a mile for mileage. You will be paid by hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not um, some, something the census told um, us last week is that um, they uh, they recognize that the unemployment rate is so low. Right. And they do encourage even those working people, you know, because it's that golden, like, after four o'clock and those weekend crowds, right. um, you won't be necessarily like knocking on doors if that's your role for 10 hours. But instead, you know, you might be knocking for like six hours mm-hmm. and then four hours a week will be paperwork. Absolutely. Right. So yeah. it is really flexible. Cause I did ask, I'm like, well, what about these people, you know, who put their kids down at eight o'clock or nine right. o'clock at night? And nine to 11 at night is like their goal. You're not gonna count, like knock on doors. And she's no. like, no, we w-. And they're willing to work around um, those interested parties' yeah. schedules. So the flexibility. Yeah, and I, I think probably the nine-month option involves uh, follow-up um, yeah. data mining. I mean, they do, they do keep a lot of people on for a while because they do have to sort through once all the paperwork is in, mm-hmm. get it in uh, the form so it goes to Washington to just be sort of all mined together, um, and then they come up with it. It's really an amazing process how they do it. I'm, I'm sort of a, a census geeking here, too. Good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get on board, Molly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know, right? Join Dennis and We are but, excited about this, and, yeah. and I think it's it's so important. Yeah, yeah. But as far I'm as the job, <laughs> if there are mobility issues, there are office jobs as well yeah. uh, that are temporary that um, you can just you sit, sit in the same place. Uh, and, th- and those um, tend to be also during the day as well. I, mean, I understand after 4 o'clock is the, when you're knocking on the door. And having done it they do say that and that's how you start off but come week three it's like you go whenever you think they might be home because some people aren't ever home right. after four some people are home at eight right. in the morning so right. um yeah so that you you start if you're available you can you know pretty much set your own schedule i would do two hours in the morning and then three hours in the afternoon and um, okay. again paperwork and you know right. at night 
I just want to repeat the, the t- time and day that we're going to have that at the Senior Center. So if you're interested in the job, um, come by the Senior Center Monday, November 18th from 10 to 12. Okay. okay. Great. And um, so anything else uh, we want to talk about today with the census? Would anything else? Have we covered? I think we covered a lot. Yeah. We do. I'm really excited. Yeah. I really, I really welcome everyone to participate specifically on census day i think that's a really momentous exciting experience uh, going a little you know census nerd here um, when we deep dove into the um, data and um, i shared this oh, yeah. with our committee um, stoneham was the only kind of municipality in the area that dipped in population in 2010 and um, i think that from 2000 to 2010 and i think that there were a lot of assumptions made that household sizes are getting smaller, people are having less children, maybe there are less people you know, moving to the area. But when I pulled the data from 2010, it turned out that every single precinct in Stoneham responded less in 2010 than in 2000. Hmm. So our dip in population may strictly be as a result of not okay. filling out the census mm. wholly, which mm. is really disappointing to me because like we don't know like we make a lot of assumptions and you know we prioritize the budget like our town budget mm-hmm. and everything else based on number of bodies and based on like our demographic information some of which we rely on the census to give us that information right yeah. but if we are not getting a complete count then we are not prioritizing correctly for the town mm-hmm. and as a as a planner as a planning professional that is problematic for me just from a um a philosophy standpoint because mm-hmm. like if I don't know that say a thousand people exist in the town are we really doing the work that we need to do to best provide for people of this mm-hmm. town Absolutely. Um, so I just want to kind of put that out there not to dampen the conversation but I really well, would like everyone to really, really think, take the time and it's not a lot of time just take a little right. bit of time answer it and let us like really really um, have a true understanding of the um, population in town. Mm-hmm. And I, if, if, if I have time, can I just give an example of, of <laughs> being undercounted? Um, and again, go back to the Council on Aging and the Senior Center, how it affects seniors in our population in, in, our, in our town. Um, we get a state grant every year through Elder Affairs. Elder Affairs uses the number of seniors that are counted in the com- in our community as to how how we get funded mm-hmm. with that grant. So if we don't have the correct count, of course, we're not going to get the biggest bang for our buck. So it's really really important. It, it affects us personally um, when when people aren't filling out the form because we're, it, it affects our department or if, if it affects the, f- the flow of yeah. what of what we're going to be able to bring into the to the council on aging spe- specifically at how it affects the seniors. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And again, from experience, I can tell you, um, I mean, I can't even believe how easy it's going to be. I think what I'm going to do is just put my coffee on one morning, hop on my Chromebook, fill out the census, and it'll be done before yeah. the coffee's finished brewing. Because right. what I remember about the interviews from 10 years ago is the what took the time was convincing the people to actually do it. Once they said, okay, I'll do it, the interview took two minutes. <laughs> yeah. You know, even if they have five people living in their house, they don't ask for that much information. Again, it's just purely demographic information. Um, the only... Um, thing we asked to get in touch was a phone number that doesn't go on the official census information. It's just if we have follow-up, if, if there's a problem with the form or something, um, just a call to clarify information, and that's it. And a lot of people chose not to give a phone number, and that's fine. Right. Um, you know, just the fact of answering the questions and getting being counted is what it's all about. Being counted. Um, um, one more thing, and I think you wanted to mention the um, town census. Yes. Yes. Right. So let's let's recap for everyone. So yes. the town census, you'll get information about the town census after Christmas time. It'll it'll kind of roll out at the um, in January this year. That's a good dress rehearsal for the national census. Um, uh, we ask, and I think it's expected that every single person, every single household, fills out both. Um, both are considered data sets and both are really important for different reasons, um, but both are used Mm -hmm. for its information. And I really want to make sure people understand that yes, even after you do the January census, please do so. Like, please do the one in April. Uh, Let's celebrate with Census Day. I think our complete count committee, which is our, you know, our, our task, our objective is to enable and 
encourage people to participate in the census and you know this is part of that but I think that we're going to do a lot of great events around the census. We hope we convert other people to become census nerds like Dennis and I. I think we have had one conversion today. I think, so. I think we're almost there with Maureen. Um, and I, I just really hope, you know, that uh, we really kind of embrace this process and yeah. people have a real understanding. And even if they don't care about the data, even if it doesn't, they feel it affect them day to day, just please do it. Um, yeah. It really matters. And um, please do both. Yeah. I guess is the good thing. Yeah. And if you want and to be a super nerd, you can apply to be a census worker. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I really honestly think that doing both um, census forms will take you probably three minutes combined. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably Quick. a minute for the town census in January and maybe two minutes in, in March for that. So, um, And again, a lot of people don't like people coming around to their house. Very easy way to avoid that. Call in, go online. Yeah. Or submit the uh, or request and submit the paper form, and then you won't even have to worry about it. So, Aaron Wartman, Maureen Canova, thank mm-hmm. you for joining me today. Thank you, Dennis. For thank the you. Stoneham Council on Aging. You're watching and listening to Senior Matters on Stoneham TV. Thank you. Great.